start right off. I stumbled into facility management, and I'm so glad I did, because I found a profession that engages all of my talents, some of my passions, and it has allowed me to see things and do things I did not even know existed, as you've heard everyone say, until I got into this career. I've had the opportunity over the last many years to speak at numerous World Workplace sessions, at IFMA chapters throughout the country, and at other IFMA-related events, and I often like to start out by asking, who actually studied for this profession? And so I want to do that right now. How many of you, let's say from college, figured out you wanted to enter this as a profession, so you studied FM or design or engineering as Jake did, whatever it might be, you knew this was the path you wanted to take, raise your hands. Keep them up. Everybody look around. Thank you. How many of you studied for something else entirely? Maybe something so far removed from FM, it's laughable, and yet you found yourself turning a corner, going through a door, and before you knew it, you were in FM and there was no turning back. Raise your hands. Now everybody look around. You see, even with all of the great work that IFMA and the IFMA Foundation are doing in promoting this profession to young people and sharing with them what a rich and varied career it can be, the stories of those of us who tripped and crashed into facility management still far outweigh the stories of those of you who were intentional. And some of our stories are pretty good. Mine, I was working up the road for the president of Cal State Northridge in 1994. When the 1994 Northridge earthquake occurred, it was a 6.8 on the Richter scale and in a matter of seconds caused $300,000 worth of, $300 million worth of damage. 300 million. We lost two students in an off-campus apartment collapse. We worked in tents on an athletic field for three cold, wintry, rainy Southern California months and yes, my friends, it gets cold in the San Fernando Valley. Temperatures drop overnight into the 20s. And I watched as facilities people began to put that university back together practically brick by brick. First, in setting up classes in trailers that were hauled in from all over the country, and then to begin the work of addressing the severe damage. Well, you go through something like that and you think, you know, I have to do something significant with my life. So what did I do? What everybody in California does when we want a second start. I went back to school, got a master's degree in clinical psychology so I could be a therapist. <laughs> but uh, I found that that intense one-on-one -on -one of therapeutic work did not really light my fire. And so I moved back east wanting a change of seasons and a little less traffic and I secured a job in office management, and it was there that FM snared me. I started getting those questions that many of you will recognize. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Sue, could you um, speak with the janitorial staff at night and make sure that everything's getting done the way it's supposed to? Sure. Sue, um, do you think you could order us some office furniture? We need some office furniture. Sure, I, I can do that. Sue, now that you've done that, could you get our conference rooms carpeted with new carpet? By, before I knew it, I was in a profession that excited me and engaged me. And I have a talent for seeing other people's talents, and so working with designers and architects and other creatives really energized me. But I developed a tremendous respect for the HVAC technician who can delicately balance temperatures. <laughs> and the electrician who will search out a faulty wire endlessly. And I don't know about you, but a good furniture installer is a genius. <laughs> because he can usually figure out how to put the furniture together in ways I am sure the manufacturer probably did not intend. <laughs> Recently, an ancient sound masking system in a building I was managing went on the fritz after a power outage. So I did my usual professional, very methodical work of going up to the unit, unplugging it, opening up the back, spitting on it, kicking it, slamming it closed, and plugging it back in. No lights, no sound. So I called my two favorite electricians, and I said, guys, please, 
the, the, the management doesn't want to invest in a new system. They're going to be moving soon. Could you please just make it work, make it limp along? They said, Sue, they don't even make parts for this anymore. I said, I know, I know, but would you please try? They said, for you, we will. It was 1.30. I was sitting in an office on an empty floor that was so quiet it was like a mausoleum when suddenly I heard it. White noise! <laughs> We're so easily pleased in FM. White noise! I jumped up out of my chair, I ran upstairs, I threw open the door to the electrical closet where they were working and I said, I love you guys! And I meant it. <laughs> Here's the thing. I work in a... We work in a profession that takes so many skilled technicians, so many super smart professionals, but also so many plain old, hardworking, blue collar, dirty jobs kind of guys. You know it's right. Who will crawl into smelly chases and up greasy vents and other terrible places that I don't have to, all so that they can get the work and put their talents into building and maintaining and repairing and operating a building. I appreciate every single one of the good ones, the ones who, like me, take personal responsibility for a job well done. They make me look good. And I tell them, make me look good and I will be loyal to you. When they come through for me, they often save my hide. I have nothing but the deepest admiration and respect for them. And yes, I love them. <laughs> look, I am not the world's greatest facility manager. I confess this before the annual conference of the International Facility Management Association. I am not the world's greatest facility manager. I don't have every, every last bit of technical knowledge I need. Even now, I am still growing. But I'm not brilliant at everything. None of us are. We're all brilliant at a few things. And we need to put our efforts into honing those things to perfection. I am not phenomenal at building and maintaining buildings. I do pretty good at it. I can make a living at it. But what I am world class at is building and maintaining relationships. And I do that on this job. I have the power to build relationships that make me successful, that make me valuable to my employers. Right. And another thing, I have the power to lift someone's day just by doing my job with a professional attitude and a willingness to help. I can change someone's world just by changing the temperature. <laughs> I don't have to change the whole world. I am perfectly content knowing that I have an effect on one person at a time, day by day, having an impact on the group of people under my care by taking care of a building and its systems as though it were my own. I use that master's degree in clinical psychology all the time. <laughs> with colleagues, with contractors, with all of the people who have helped me to get to this place. They're all different. They all have different personalities, different working styles. They all bring something different to the table, just as I do. And so do all of you. This is the value we bring to FM. We bring who we are to work with us every day. We show up with specific identifiable talents. We're not all the same. We're all different. We don't excel at everything. So we have to put our talents, our time, into developing our strengths so that our weaknesses become irrelevant. And while we're doing that, we surround ourselves with those who come along and fill in the spaces where we don't excel, but they do. If we will do that, if we'll figure out what our own contribution is, and, and if, that, if we will also at the same time acknowledge and value and appreciate the talents of those who come alongside to help us get the job done, we will make this profession, this community, 
stronger with each new generation of FMs. I stumbled into FM and I found terrific job satisfaction. I wish the same for all of you. Thank you.